Thanks for joining me, and welcome to Big Scott's House of SGs. I've got all the SGs out today because uh, my customer has requested that I install a master volume on his SG. He's a big fan of Gretsch guitars, and he likes the way that they have, um, on a Gretsch, they have a master volume, and then individual volumes for both pickups, and then a tone that is, uh, well, just one tone. So three volumes, one tone. And uh, we're going to do it to this SG. And it, it's not going to require any, you know, installing any new components. Like, I don't have to buy any new pots or anything, or switch or jack or anything like that. We just have to rearrange the, the configuration of the wires. It's kind of like if you have a foot pedal board for your guitar. You're coming out of your guitar, and you're going into your distortion and then you go to your delay or your reverb, you'd want the delay and the reverb after the distortion rather than distorting the, the delay. You want a, you know, a clean signal sometimes. You want to clean things up and you still want to delay it and all that. Uh, it's the same way. We're just going to change the order of the components. So we'll take this back plate off and uh, pull out the guts. First, I desolder the pickup wires, which are these two wires. If you're new to soldering or electronics in general, um, these are the pots, potentiometers, variable resistors, and these little guys are the capacitors. So instead of having two capacitors, we're going to take it down to one capacitor. This is going to be our master volume. These two are going to be our individual uh, pickup volumes, neck, volume, bridge volume, and this one will be the tone. So, like I said, first things first, we're going to get all these components up and out of the guitar cavity. Adding a little fresh solder will help get things flowing. This soldering pen is uh, it, it, it is variable wattage between 15 and 120 volts or watts and I should get my fan going that'll suck all this smoke out of the way hold on here first you want, want to identify which pickup wire is which this is the neck volume, right? So this one is connected at the lug. So this this is the neck, this the smaller braided, the one with the smaller braid. It, look, it appears smaller. I'm gonna put this piece of tape on it as soon as I get it loose and I can get it out of there. Uh, this ground wire can come off. Anytime you see something connected to the back of a pot, it's a ground wire. This yellow one's ground connecting the two volumes to each other. So there's the ground going to the bridge. Okay, the the lead wire from from the neck pickup can come next. Got it. This one's the bridge.
now everything's disconnected. This one was the neck. And we'll just leave the bridge unlabeled. Now we can pull the guts out. Sometimes these babies are stuck on there pretty good. Sometimes they're not so hard, but Sometimes they're tough, sometimes they're not. Now we're gonna need, instead of two volumes, two tones, as far as knobs go, we're gonna need three volumes and one tone. So I have to check my drawer to see if we can help him out, or if he'll have to just find that on his own. I mentioned that to him while he was here that I wasn't sure if I had spare knobs. This little guy works on the switch tip for the switch. I was watching Ted Woodford and he was doing an arch top with a switch and I was wondering why he didn't use a recessed switch. He'd counterboard the, um, <clears throat> the, the top of the guitar so that the switch would pull through further but he could have maybe used one of these types of switches, I'm not sure, but this one th threads from, you know, within the cavity there of the hole. I think it's called a deep, maybe a deep, uh, a deep nut. That could have saved Ted several hours. I don't know. Now we get everything loose. Flip it over. And to pull it all out of here. I'm gonna put it all right on the bench. Some people try to do all this stuff with everything. Um, everything um, still <clears throat> in the guitar, but <clears throat> they think they're saving time by just putting, leaving everything in the guitar, but <laughs> that'll be a huge neck ache. I mean, literally, a neck ache. You'll be so uncomfortable. I think Ted should watch my channel more often. I can save him a lot of time. Saving time saves money. Alright. Let's do this. Next, I find Gretsch wiring diagram in the book. But the configuration's all weird, so I had to redraw it out. So I redrew it the way it's supposed to be in the SG guitar. Now I made a little cardboard cutout, and I will jam the components into it. I don't poke myself. Dead. That's better. Now I can start taking all these wires off because it's completely... This whole thing is out the window. All this is wrong now. I mean, not a single thing can stay. So, off with the wires. Here's a little something I like to do when the uh, when the holes get covered up with solder. I come in and warm it up, and then use my poker to get that hole open. Sometimes I have to do it twice if there's a lot in there, and that cleans out the hole. Um, 
So those guys at Gibson, I'm going to call them bastards right now because they cut the legs off on the the ones they didn't need. They just cut them off. Um, I need this one. I think I'll just solder the wire right here on the base of it and pray. Bastards. They did it to this one too. They just cut it right off. May God help them. Okay, so here's two pickups. They're alligator clipped to the pots. Output jack to the amp. I got my bridge pickup. I got my bridge volume right here. Got my master volume here. Neck volume, master volume work. Bridge pickup. Bridge volume. I think that needs cleaned. Tone. Bridge. Okay, neck. Tone. I got wires touching. Tone works. Both pickups. Well, I'd say we it's working. This is my one string dulcimer and two test pickups. With a few alligator clips back here. I guess we can stuff it back in the guitar. I still have these copper alligator clips on the legs of the capacitor. That's these are heat sinks. That'll keep uh, keep me from damaging the uh, capacitors with the heat. They don't like heat. And then uh, sometimes I'll take like a little bit of solder and I'll wrap it around and I'll uh, just kind of I'll just kind of put it where I need it. This is the ground wire to the bridge. I want to go right there. Just get a little bit more on there. Okay, I got the two bridge leads, or the two pickup leads to the middle lugs of each volume pot. And the last one I need to do is this ground wire. I extended it out. Um, this braided part, portion, this braided portion of the bridge pickup no longer reaches the bridge pot. I mean, originally it was connected to the neck volume pot, which was here, but now it's moved to here. I think it'll, it would actually still, I have to actually warm up the neck volume pot braided wire right there. Get it down. These ones take the longest because they're, they're thick wires. I 
I think this bridge wire would actually reach the neck. But I extended, I used a little extension thing here because I just wanted to make sure I had enough wiggle room. Okay, I'll get that on there. Another reason I laid in this extension ground wire is because I wasn't sure if these two volume pots needed to be grounded together and if it's really noisy and I find out that when I touch this down to the back of the pot that it quiets down I'll end up pushing that down there and uh, grounding the two together. But I'm going to plug it in first and check. Looks like we're in business. I have an extra volume knob. Oh and she fits nice. Um, the only thing that I would kind of want to complain about is that the uh, when the master volume's all the way up, the uh, and you have the like bridge or hump or neck. Whoops, that's the tone. There it is. There's that volume. When the master volume's up and the neck bridge or the neck pot is all the way down you can still kind of hear it there's like a little bleed through I guess and that's the only complaint I would have that's weird these uh these Gibson pots are not the fine Ugh, weird these are like import coarse uh, sh split shaft pots. I've never seen Gibson pots that were coarse before. I thought they're always uh, I thought they were always fine with like 24 splines but these have 18 splines. Let me go check my knob drawer again. There we go. You see that? We got three volumes in one tone and these are coarse shaft pots which freaking me out. I always thought Gibsons were fine. I guess sometimes they use CTS, sometimes they use Alpha. I don't get it. Oh, and the switch tip? Well, we'll be playing this thing. Let's give her a test run. And then we got the individuals, the neck, there's the bridge. I don't hear it bleeding through as much as I did earlier, I think. I think now that I put the, the stuff in there, it's a... Uh, it's very nice. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate all of you new subscribers. Keep coming back every week. I'll have another guitar restoration video or maybe something weird like this once in a while. And if you go to my uh, my channel and you click on uh, playlists, you'll see everything's already kind of sorted out. You got your neck resets in one playlist and all the fretwork videos in another. And there's videos from other channels like the Luth Group and a whole bunch of others. So, catch you later.